back with us, uh, thank, thankfully, is NBC News Chief White House Correspondent and Weekend Today co-anchor Kristen Welker. And she's also joined by, we're joined by President and CEO of the Center for American Progress, Patrick Gaspard. Thanks to both of you. Kristen, first to you. Just what is likely to come from the president? The message now to fellow Democrats in these meetings is, get it done, or how can I bring you together? There was criticism that he wasn't doing enough to bang heads together. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, Andrea. His message is going to be, get it done, to officials saying, land the plane. It's time to have something to show the American people. So the question is, how is that going to happen? Here's what we know. We know that there are a flurry of meetings at the White House today. We know that there have been a number of conversations on Capitol Hill, a number of phone calls between both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue. But what if any progress has really been made? That remains to be seen. Based on my conversations just a short while ago here at the White House, Andrea, I can tell you that there are still a number of key sticking points including one of the key climate proposals that is included in the reconciliation bill. Senator Manchin is opposed to it. He wants it scaled back. Will it be scaled back altogether? Will progressives support that? So what would be in its place? Well, potentially a carbon tax, they say. Senator Joe Manchin, though, just shot that down moments ago with our Ali Vitale on Capitol Hill saying that at this point, the carbon tax is not on the board at all right now. We also know that the child tax credit is among the key sticking points. And I'm just naming a few, Andrea. As you know, there are a long list of them. Still, White House officials say the fact that this is one of the busiest days of meetings yet is significant and could be an indication that these talks are moving in the right direction. As for President Biden, he will be engaged in all of these meetings here at the White House today. Then he's going to be out on the road. Tomorrow he heads to Scranton. He's going to try to sell his Build Back Better plan. And then he's going to hold a town hall in Baltimore on Thursday. This all comes against a politically fraught backdrop. In addition to the midterms, which you've been discussing throughout the hour, and Andrea, there are critical elections taking place just two weeks from now, with Democrats saying their races could be impacted if Washington doesn't act. Andrea. Especially that Virginia governor's race. Thanks so much, Kristen. And Patrick Gaspard, is it past time for the president to be holding separate meetings and just bring everyone together? I remember when he was vice president, he had a whole group over in Blair House where he was trying to get a budget deal. Well, you know, the, the president is a very, very skilled negotiator. He understands that body far better than uh, most uh, legislators do. Uh, let's remember that when we got health care done, uh, it was uh, Joe Biden, then vice president, who got to Capitol Hill and had the 11th hour negotiations that pushed us over the finish line after we were told that this was done. But you're right that there is a fierce urgency. The elections in Virginia are two weeks from now. The president leaves for uh, a trip overseas uh, next uh, week, Thursday. Uh, and this legislation has been out there for eight months. Uh, you showed the scrum between Senator Manchin and uh, Senator uh, Sanders. I just want to hasten to add that those two senators have more that they agree with uh, in this bill than they disagree with. Both oppose the Trump tax cuts and are clear that it has to be uh, repealed and that we have to raise the corporate tax rate. Both of them are very clear on the provisions around child care. Uh, and they need to create more access to those slots for parents uh, in this country. Uh, and both of them are negotiating towards the lowering of price, uh, dr drug prices for Americans. So there's a lot of agreement there. Uh, they're just uh, working out uh, the margins. Yeah, well, the areas they disagree on are really tough sticking points, though. Uh, Senator Manchin is also yeah. asking for work requirements for the child tax credit. And the Washington Post today examined that and how it would affect for instance, grandparent-led households, many households led by grandparents who are neither physically nor financially prepared to raise another child. Some are still working. Most grandparents are responsible for their grandchildren but are no longer in the labor force. They're often retired, disabled, or both. So isn't that an unreasonable demand to have a work requirement for child care? I, th I, think, I, I think that we've already seen, uh, Andrea, in the, few, uh, the first half of this year that a robust uh, child uh, credit has already helped to significantly cut poverty in communities across this country. So it is necessary that we get uh, this provision uh, in. Uh, and I think that Senator Manchin has said publicly that he uh, recognizes the, the merits of it. Uh, we've had these kinds of negotiations before on um, uh, means testing. 
uh, and I think that we'll um, continue to move this forward. But it, it is a difficult demand to make given the challenges uh, that we know parents have, that grandparents have, uh, and the need uh, for this that was really exposed and revealed during COVID. Patrick Gaspard, thank you so much. And of course, Kristen Welker, so great to have you back. Thanks, Andrea. Great and to be back. Thank you.